Hey guys, I'm Ethan Moore from Stockholm Supply and today I'm talking about blade drift and why your bandsaw drifts. Now, there's a lot of things that you can listen to that will tell you maybe how your table is aligned to the blade, maybe your guides, maybe your setup, maybe the blade itself. But today I'm going to talk about the one and the only reason that your bandsaw drifts. And simply put, it's always, 100% of the time, your blade. Now, I'm not telling you that you necessarily have the wrong blade on there, but what I'm saying is the way that these blades are designed, they have teeth on the front that are bent out, and it's very easy to damage a bandsaw blade. Very easy to modify the set, um, which will make this drift. Now, what I wanna talk about is the common ways that we will damage this blade and make a drift, and what we can do to keep that from happening. So the most common way to damage a bandsaw blade is unfortunately the most common way that we resaw. Uh, most of us, when we're resawing a board, imagine we have this piece of walnut right here and we want to split that walnut right down the middle. We're going to use a fence. Now what we know about wood is as I split that wood down the middle here, um, it will, let me get a fence right out of here. Um, it'll stress, it may open, it may close, it may twist. Uh, when that wood begins to stress, it's going to open up. Um, it's going to push against this fence here. Now, it's not going to go beyond the fence. The, it's going to push itself away from the fence and bind the blade. Now, when you bind the blade on a table saw, you get kickback. That's why table saws behind the blade, they have splitters. Now, on a bandsaw, of course, there's no splitter. On a bandsaw, when I bind the blade, I don't have to worry about a safety thing. There's no kickback or anything like that but you may get burn marks. But worst of all, you get the teeth on the front of the blade like this. When I put pressure on one side more than the other, this side of the blade gets a little bit duller and that blade, <clears throat> it's gonna wanna cut to the sharper edge. So that's what it's gonna do right there. So that's what blade drift is. So basically, <clears throat> as soon as I use a fence and I bind that blade, that's gonna cause drift. Now what I can do to get away from that is when I'm resawing, I can use a carriage. Now this is our little ripper here. This is a good example of a carriage. Um, pretty well any bandsaw mill in the country uses a carriage a little bit like this. So let me make a quick cut and I'll face off the outside here. This is just, I quickly clamped it in my little ripper and I'll show you what I mean here. So let me make a slice. All right, so you guys can see this particular cut there, nice and straight. So what I want to do now is um, just to show you how this carriage works in comparison to a fence. Uh, right now I have a proper setup. I got my guide set up properly. I got my blade properly tensioned. But what's going to happen if I change that? So let me let's let the blade stop here. Okay, so I'm going to remove the guides here. Now, I'm not telling you guys to take the guides off your saw, but this is just an example here. Now, when you're setting up these guides, you gotta remember, you're setting these up just a little bit away from the blade, just so they don't quite touch, um, like a paper thickness away. So if I'm cutting perfectly straight, that blade right there, it's not moving side to side, right? It's cutting straight. So here's what I know. If I make this bearing on the side spin, with a properly set up saw, I know if that bearing's spinning, I'm not actually cutting straight. So let me get rid of these side guides. For cutting straight, they're not actually very important. And just for fun here, I've already got fairly low tension. Let me lower that just a little bit more. Okay, you maybe you heard that thunk there. But I got very low tension here. Now, if I were to make this cut right now with a fence, you guys know what would happen. It would be all over the place here. But because I'm using a carriage, because I'm only hitting the front of the teeth and never the side of the blade, watch what happens here. All right, let me make another cut. Could you grab the dust collector for me again? Yeah. All right, so that's without guides, with low tension, with my 3 8 blade, 
and you can see I'm cutting perfectly straight, every bit as straight as I was before. And that's simply because I'm not using a fence, I'm not binding the blade. The only part of the blade I'm hitting is the front of the teeth. And when I only ever hit the front of the teeth, my blade is going to cut perfectly straight every time, no matter how poor your setup is. Now the other very common way that we can damage our blades here um, is simple, guide setup. Now you heard me talk a little earlier about side guides, they're not really super important when it's the, it comes to cutting straight, but they are very important when it comes to cutting curves. Now, that being said, if you don't have these side guides set up properly, or you have them set up incorrectly, you can damage the teeth. So if we just come over to the side of the guides here, Kate, um, what we want to do when we're setting up these side guides is you want to make sure that this guide right here on the side is behind where the gull the lowest part of the teeth, the gullet of the tooth. Because if you have that set too far forward, let me slide this forward a little bit. Maybe I can do that. If I have this set too far forward like that and I actually cover the teeth, what will happen with these bearings or a block, it'll flatten the teeth out and that blade will cut terribly because um, we'll lose the set of that teeth. Now, so what you're always going to want to do is keep the side guides just behind the teeth, right behind that gullet there. Now, that being said, if I have it set up properly on the side here and I have my thrust bearing set too far back, once I start cutting, I'll push that blade back, I'll push it into the side guides and do the exact same thing, wrecking those teeth. So make sure you have that thrust bearing set just behind the blade, like a paper thickness away from the back of the blade. It's very easy to see on the top. The most common place you're gonna do this, and it's by accident, you're not paying attention, is below the table. Um, that thrust bearing on the bottom here, it's hard to see, um, you always forget it's there, but make sure that thrust bearing on the bottom is set up properly, or else if that blade gets pushed too far back into the side guides on the bottom, you'll strip the teeth on your blade, and that blade will start to drift. Now the very last thing to consider about protecting your blade is the wood you're cutting. Um, sometimes if I'm cutting wood straight from a log with the bark on it, you always gotta be careful what is in this wood. If I hit a nail or a stone, sometimes in this bark here, that blade is not designed to cut that and it will wreck the set. Um, so if you have trouble with your blade drifting, um, it could easily be the wood that you're cutting. So pay close attention to that. Um, so yeah, that's pretty well what you gotta look for when you're looking to resaw, uh, when you're struggling with blade drift, it really is always the blade that you gotta worry about. You just gotta figure out what is going on with that blade making it drift. Um, so a Little Ripper, it's a really cool product. Um, it's the only thing on the market that no matter how poorly you set up your blade, you're guaranteed to cut straight. But there's some other things you gotta look at here. So yeah, if anybody else has any questions, you can email me at info at stockmansupply.com or just comment on the video. Thanks for watching.